Documentaries have a unique power to tell stories and shine light on situations that are often overlooked. Beyond Utopia is one such documentary that has captured the global imagination with its portrayal of real North Koreans as they risk their lives to escape the communist regime. Imagine waking up one day and realizing that you were born on a completely different planet and everything you learned was lie and the heroes you worship were actually monstrous villains. The regime told us we are living in utopia, but we are captured in a huge virtual prison. Sometimes people will die through torture and there's no recourse. <laughs> The documentary won awards at both the Sundance and Sydney Film Festivals and one of the 15 movies shortlisted for the Best Documentary Feature Oscar. Our globalist today, Lee hyun is one of its executive producers and a North Korean escapee herself. Her memoir, The Girl with Seven Names, was an international bestseller and she continues to be one of the most vocal advocates for North Koreans who flee the repressive regime. Welcome to The Globalist. Thank you for having me. We are very glad you took the time to come. Now, um, the documentary, let's start with that documentary. You're not just the executive producer. Mm -hmm. You actually start the documentary. Yeah. When it starts, we, we hear your voice right. and you start talking about your story, about that night. The Yalu River is the border between China and North Korea. And my hometown, a place I grew up living was Utopia, is on the border right across from China. Do you remember that day? Yeah, the memory is really vivid until today because it was only 20 something years ago from but it was now. So 20 some years ago, when really? you were 17. Yeah, so, but still it's really vivid to me because that was my first time in my life crossing the border. That's mm. not just the one like a river, it's a border. It's a very severe border between North Korea and China, and border guards are guarded the mm -hmm. area very severely with arms, mm -hmm. even today. So I was a really lucky one escaping the border at the time. Some people are dying, thrown oh. into the water, yeah. or some people were shot by the border guards. Yes or some trained military dogs. Oh. So the dogs are chasing people all the way to Chinese side and they buy off, that happens. Mm -hmm. So some people were killed like that. Mm -hmm. So compared to those people, I was a super lucky one because I had a relationship with the border guards. We has, mm -hmm. I know some of them, mm -hmm. that's how it was helped under their protection, but still I was so scared. And then at the time I didn't know we, in North Korea, we don't have a religion. All God is only one, or dear little yeah. Kim. Yes, so his dear son, Kim, the Kim family. He's the sunshine of mm. the whole world. That's mm. what we were learned. But at that time, I don't know. I just somehow prayed to, to the God. I don't know where is the real God. Just Whoever to, you are. Uh, uh, just please help me, you know. That was my really first praying to mm. somewhere, I don't know, to the sky. Yeah. Mm. But miraculously, yeah. by miracle, you actually crossed into North Korea. And that was what sort of changed your life? Even though 
people who read my book calling me accidental defector. Accidental defector? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I didn't really at the time plan to escape my country totally mm. because my situation in North Korea was pretty well off. Yeah. So I don't have to escape or I don't have to be a defector. Mm. But I was so curious about the outside world mm. because we were learned that North Korea is a utopia. Mm. And many people in the outside, like America or South Koreans, are suffering under mm -hmm. the America's dictatorship. The regime told us we are living in utopia and that many other countries are living in a disaster. We learned that South Korean students didn't have any clothes. They're begging food on the street. I thought North Korea, even though seeing people starving, something, the situation not really good, but I thought that was the, the world was look like that. Mm. That's why I still believed having dear little or life was still pretty good. Mm. But one day I, I saw the Chinese TV secretly at night, because in North Korea, even watching foreign media yeah. is a ban. It's a crime. Yeah. Mm. Band. So, but secretly I watched at night by covering the windows, covering the lights mm -hmm. and then under the blankets. I just really turn off the, the sound, sound yeah. and then I watched the TV. Although I don't understand Chinese language, but seeing Chinese TV, I realized maybe North Korea is not the best in the world. Maybe China is the best in the world. And then we were learned China was uh, below than us. We, oh, oh, even yeah. China? Yeah, yeah. So is that TV is a brainwash for us or that is a real life actually? That's why I really wanted to see the real, the Chinese life uh, with my own eyes. You didn't realize when you, as a 17 year old girl, you sort of set out on mm. this, adventure mm -hmm. that you would never, uh, on, well, we, we don't know never, mm. but until today, you would never step back into North Korea. I could have never imagined that could be my last minute with my home country mm. and with my family members at the time. I just literally had no ideas. So I was keep asking myself for many years if there's a time machine where you make the same decision. That same question mm. asked myself mm. so many times. I heard you, you said you would not, you would not cross the border. Yeah, and many people were shocked yeah. by saying that because I'm not the hero by saying, oh, still I will make the same choice mm. to take me go back to suffering again from China, everything. I don't have the courage to do that, but most important is the separation with the family members were the most hard things to bear with. So after 14 years, I, I made my dream come true by helping my family escaping the country. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that, but now that process mm. of leaving and then finding your way into South Korea, which was the most difficult aspect. Is the title why you titled your <laughs> memoir, The Girl with Seven Names, and also sort of the theme of the documentary, Beyond yeah. Utopia. It's that process, yeah. escaping North Korea, and then finding your way to, to freedom. Yeah. How did you get involved with the documentary? It was uh, like 2017, I guess, in New York City. I had a book signing, my book signing this event. One, book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which was an international bestseller, the New York Times bestseller. Yeah, it is more than 40 countries published. So it's a pretty big book. And then mm -hmm. during the book signing, Robert, Hollywood legend, mm -hmm. Robert De Niro, he was one of the attendees at the oh. time. There was a Q&A session. He just loudly, asking me a question among mm. the crowd. He said, Hyunso, what can I do for you? Mm. And then I just said, please, you know, make my story into a movie or the factor's story mm -hmm. make into a movie so that I wanted to see the movie in Hollywood screen, you know. Mm -hmm. That was uh, my answer. Mm. But you know, by saying that, I didn't really 
thought it will came true, it will come true. Mm -mm. But somebody, somebody who was at the moment who listened to my answer to the Robert De Niro, he delivered my book to the documentary production ah. team at the time. That's how they read it and they, it was started, mm -hmm. the project. Yeah. Why is it important to you that this becomes a movie? I wanted to become a bridge between world and the inside North Korean people. I wanted mm. to, you know, be a bridge. So by making this movie, I wanted to let people in the world know about the situation, the mm. reality in North Korea, not only a crazy dictator who mm. loved to play with the nuclear things, you know, but I want to peop let people know about the reality in North Korea. So I've been doing a lot of uh, the speeches, interviews, activities, many uh, writing books. I did everything. So what could I do more than make movie is yeah. the one thing. And then many people are seeing movie, I mean, than books, right? Mm -hmm. That's how my dream started from mm -hmm. there. So you wanted to say it's not just this dictator and the leadership but the people that are suffering, that are trying to escape, that we, you need to tell the story of. Mm. Your story. Yes. Now, Beyond Utopia does tell a story of a family um, uh, like your, your family when they escaped to North Korea. Yeah. Did you find that it was very real? You know, that movie, what you see, what other people see, that's uh, compared to the reality what people are facing on the way escaping from North Korea all the way to South Korea is nothing. The story is a very minor story. The real story is more severe, more drama, more it's, than it's much worse. Much worse. Much worse. Because I was the one who really experienced by mm -hmm. helping my family escaping out 2010. Mm -hmm. We were even put in prison mm -hmm. several times in Laos. So the real story is more than a movie because they can't put in that movie all. So the people in that film is a really, the five family members yeah, yeah, yeah. are really lucky one. I, That's I, really comfortably they escape. Escaping North Korea and then arriving to South Korea means we have to meet lucky. Miracle. Otherwise, we can't come to this land. Mm. So the five family members are very lucky. Without any big issue, they yeah. just came. It almost seemed the other story yeah. of the mother who couldn't yeah. get her son out of North Korea. That's... That was a much more reality. Either 50 is succeeded, like the 55 family members, or the other 50 is what Soyeon's son happened. So just totally two divided stories we have. Mm. Um, the in reality, just uh, prisons, tortures, you know, mm -mm. after repatriating North Korea, they are facing even public executions. The real story is you can't compare with the movie inside. Your family, it was much more difficult for them to escape. I went all the way to the border side, oh. not hiring brokers because I don't believe brokers. Yeah. If there's a, something happens, they are not protect my families. Mm -hmm. I know that. So the documentary sort of yeah, shows yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. That's why I, I was kind of broker. My acting was I went all the way went to the border. I was helping my family escaping, but. It was beyond the movie. It's, it's, it, I can't explain But for you, it's very dangerous. You, yeah. If you, they caught you, you could go back to North Korea. I will be in public execution immediately by having South Korean passport. Yeah. yeah. All family, even today, we are not talking about the story when we are escaping. The mm -hmm. memory was too painful to us. So the first ride was a border area to Sunyang city in China. I 
didn't know we were face within five minutes the policeman stopped the bus yeah. at the so, time. So border guards. Well, border guards. Uh, uh, I prepared ID cards, Chinese ID cards. So I thought it could be okay. But the border guards who were armed, mm. he was boarding on a bus and the fifty around fifty people on the bus. If he checked ID cards it was more easier to okay. me, but he didn't. He just checked everyone's eyes. If he feels somehow strange, then he's going to ask some question. And then on the bus, my brother was the only man on the oh. bus. And then he realized maybe that is a North Korean guy. So he was walking towards my brother on the bus. At the moment, I had to do something, but I have no idea. Just uh, all my body was stunned. What can I do? What can I do? But at the moment, I realized in my hand, I had a camera. So I just uh, put in front of his face, I just snapped. So taking pictures? It, uh, just uh, I clicked the button crazily. Just, and he was so mad. Mm. He was yelling to me because my purpose was to distract him. Mm -mm. The, all the attention to my brother, it was on me. Then he said, don't, in Chinese, don't you know this is illegal in this kind of situation, taking photos of this? Mm. So I said, I was smiling. I, I, literally, I was acting. I didn't know this is illegal. I mean, nobody told me, so it don't matter me. I can't delete this. Look at, look at mm -hmm. like this. I just did shoes, just ridiculous actions at the time. So, so many passengers on the bus was staring at me and him. And he was so stunned mm -hmm. by people's eyes. And then he just quickly left the bus. So that was the first miracle happened to me, but the story was goes on, goes on like that. In the end, still, my family was in prison in Laos twice. So my mother, when she first arrived in South Korea, we met in Gwanghamun. The first thing she said, you told me escaping North Korea and to get to South Korea will take two weeks. So you will meet us in Seoul in two weeks, right? But it took more than one year. Wow. It's because they were in prison. So that was a reality. <laughs> I've been so lucky, received so much help and inspiration in my life. So I want help give aspiring North Koreans a chance to prosper with international support. Mr. President, please help us to stop the repatriations from China and give North Korean people the freedom that they deserve. Thank you for They're incredible stories. We actually have uh, two other people outside, and they're literally afraid of execution. They didn't want to be with cameras, and I can understand that. So, um, even with your book, even with the TED Talks that you do, which are hugely popular, um, and now Beyond Utopia, do you still find that people outside of Korea, outside of North Korea, have no idea what the North Koreans go through? You know, I think, including me, many people did a lot of work to tell the world about the reality in North Korea, just uh, there's a normal suffering people out there need help. So through many channels, we, I worked and many people did that. And there a lot of uh, progress mm -mm -mm. also in UN Security Councils, etc., etc. And then even President Trump, mm. he was yeah, curious he about a, human rights. He had a meeting with yeah. President Trump when he was yeah. President Trump. Yeah, so many issues happened. Please, very progressive events, but still, very surprisingly, people ask me some question. Hmm. Really, people are inside suffering like that? 
people can't picture about the country because they never experienced the country or didn't see the country. Only yeah. they, some of them hear or read from the books. But one thing was, what was really sad on me was when I visited America, many countries, like people are saying about the socialism, mm. they learned from books, like a 1984, George Orwell's yeah. yeah. like, Animal Farm. Uh, Animal Farm. They say when they read that, they realized how socialism like that. I was so stunned when I heard that. I came from that country, but you guys are learned the socialism from books. The reality between me and the other people in the outside was so different. But even, even as they learn from books, mm -mm. they may think you are exaggerating. Maybe, I, you know, it's not that bad. Or if it's so bad, why don't the people rise up and, you know, protest? Because not North Koreans are very not smart or not brave. I mean, there's no comparison. We are not allowed to see foreign content. Everything is blocked. We, like more than 70 years, people believed that they were living in a utopia because there was the Kim family. They didn't really well brainwash the people because they blocked everything. There's no comparison. We can see outside the world so that we can, you know, break up. Mm. And then Kim regime has too much power over 70 years. They have too big power off because they are constantly put in the public executions and get rid of three generations of family members. We grew up living in that circumstances. One side, we were really proud and then respect all government, all dear leader. But on the other side, we were living in fear mm. to not saying anything you know, what government doesn't want it, so. You know, sometimes, you know, w w that was, that is true, but mm -hmm. you know, when, when like Korean drama, South Korean mm -hmm. dramas mm -hmm. started going into North Korea, people thought that would be the start of yeah. maybe something happening in North Korea. Yeah, that is a new movement today yeah. compared to my period. But one thing is what North Korean regime is saying to that, that was a fake stories. Mm -hmm. It was a, to brainwash you guys. They made fake movie. That's, South Koreans made yeah, fake, South fake movie. South Koreans made fake movie. That's the reason when my mom arrived in Seoul, we met in Gwanghwamun, which was mm -hmm. Isun Sin statue mm -hmm. in front of the many cars stuck there, right? The first words what she said was, wow, it is true. <laughs> oh, it is true. So I say, what? What is true? And then my mom said, this all the cars on the street, this is true. So I say, yeah, it is true. Then what does that mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then she said, because I saw tons of movies or dramas about South Korea. I thought that was a fake to make the film. They gathered all the cars to make the movie. So she thought that was all fake. That's why many people in North Korea, even though they like the stories, you know, mm, love mm, stories mm. where we don't have in North Korea, they would love to watch that movies, but like, I think in the between, is that really true or fake? Like, mm. you know, that's why some people are escaping the country after seeing the drama, mm -mm. but the rest of them still think this is a brainwash. Mm. It's not real. To us, yeah. Mm. You talk about your dream being reunification. Is it still your dream? For me, that is my dream because still many people, my family members are left in North Korea, all my friends and my 17, 18 years of memories are there. And then especially people are suffering there. So my dream is unification. In reality, I kind of I realized it is really difficult to make the unification, maybe even in my lifetime, maybe. So I was thinking, I changed later my answer, like, if there's no unification, it's fine. But as long as I hope the North Korean people can see the mm. freedom, almost not similar to us, but basic rights they have or basic travels like we have, 
then I will be satisfied. That means the North Korea and South Korea will be have a better relationship than this. Sort of they can communicate or they can talk or having sort of businesses. Not the unification I'm talking about, but better situation, better relationships. That's at least I want it so that North Korean people can sort of taste about the real, just mm. the human lives. Mm. Mm. A better life for North mm. Koreans. Yeah. Mm. Will you continue to, to, to talk about North Koreans and the escape difficulties? The reason I'm here today is I, I think this is uh, my duty to share my story, tell the world. Still, still, you know, many people are saying we don't know about the truth. Mm. So until nobody say I didn't know, I want to keep going. We will um, continue to hope that your voice will be heard. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. And that's it for me. I will be back next week with another globalist who's putting Korea on the map. Sonji, out.